good evening or morning or whatever time it is for you. So we have an interesting treat for you here today. So we just I'll show you the CD here. We just used this original Performa 640 CD DOS compatible CD-ROM to erase and reformat this Macintosh Performa 640 CD DOS compatible. Now, before I did this, um, last night I copied um, all the data using a serial connection between this machine and this machine. So this one has all of the old files and stuff that I need to recopy to this at some point, um, including the disk image for the Windows side of this computer, the DOS side. So what we're going to try to do for fun is we're going to take a, an idea that I saw online that somebody did using an old iPod as a USB 1 connection to boot Windows on a regular PC. We're going to take that a step backwards and more awful. And we're going to use the serial connection between these two computers to load the disk image in real time to boot Windows 95 on this machine. So, to do so, we have to first connect to the computer, which we'll use the chooser. The network's already kind of set up. There's the one computer there. Oops. I pressed the wrong button. There we go. <clears throat> so now this computer's hard disk is right here as a as a drive. You can go on here and you can see here's all the crap on here. And in the desktop folder here, you can see perform a backup. Inside here, we'll go into its documents folder and PCHD, all right? So we'll go into PC setup, and we're going to tell it to go onto the networked drive and desktop folder, form a backup, documents, PCHD, tell it OK. Now, the serial connection is very, very slow, so I don't know how long this is going to take. Or if it'll even work right, because it's not meant to do this at all. This is slower than if I had a floppy disk with the that could hold the amount of data on it. But here we go. Enjoy. And you can see the network activity right here. It'll show, as you can see, here's the other the computer connected to it. That's me. And you can see here that it's busy. I'm surprised it's not busy, busy. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> now we wait. Any guesses as to how long this is going to take, Mr. Annoy? Uh... Hopefully long enough where you can do a time lapse. Hopefully short enough where we're not here for like an hour. So it's 6.15 right now according to this. So we'll see what time it is when it's done. Think of all the productivity that's going to occur when this is ready. Word processing. Games. Uh, quicken, beep. Still loading. Oh, one of the other funny things to show how resource intensive this is if you look at the mouse pointer on this it's supposed to move smoothly but you can see it's kind of jumping around or if you like open the menus you can see that it's just lagging horribly since it's dedicating so much resources to sending the data from this computer to that one <clears throat> and 
one of the interesting things about this machine, the way it works, is on the logic board, which looks like this, which was this, this one actually failed. This is where the processor goes, which is this guy. So he sits on here, uh, like so. And that's how it hooks into the board. Well, on this computer, or this one here, instead of this being in there, there is a big piece that sits on top of this and it has this chip in it and then the PC's 486 chip in it. Then here you can see it says, uh, it does, it's hard to read on here, but this is like a video output. So this is hooked to the PC board and this is the processor direct slot, which interfaces with the logic board as well. And that also is hooked to the PC board. So the computer is able to switch between the, this board, which is the Mac side, and the, the accessory board, which is the PC side. But the Macintosh part of it has to emulate certain parts of the PC, even though it's actual PC hardware. <clears throat> your keyboard, mouse, your serial ports, or all have to go through the Macintosh software to work with this. Now, sound is done by its own sound chip. The video is done by its own video chip. But any of any of your inputs and other outputs have to go through this. So it, it's kind of not ideal. But, you know, when you're limited on space, or like when this was new, this was fantastic. Instead of having to buy two computers, you can buy just one. And you can use both you know, applications for either or. You could even copy files in real time <clears throat> from one side to the other and copy paste. That's right, you can. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. <clears throat> one of the bad things, though, was um, it limited the machine on both ends. So the way, I mean, you could upgrade the memory, you can put a bigger hard drive in it. But you can't upgrade the CPU, really, on either side, because it's meant to work with specific parts. Well, you could put a full 68040 mm -hmm. in this in the uh, socket for the 68040. There wasn't much you could do as far as the 486. <clears throat> I don't think that... I think even if you put a different chip on it, it wouldn't really run it any faster. I thought it was soldered on, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it again. But one of the other things, though, which is funny about this machine, is when this came out, on a lot of these, it said on the box, ready for power PC upgrade, which is actually the logic board in this guy. So if you upgraded it to a power PC logic board, now you don't have this anymore. So now you can't use your the DOS part of the machine. So if you upgrade this to power PC, you just ruin the computer. <laughs> the there was actually a separate power pc upgrade for the 630 and 640 series board but it plugged into the processor direct slot and the process and the uh, processor uh, socket as well <gasps> really? so you would lose your pc compatibility functionality if you upgraded it with the power pc upgrade card yeah because the, the 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 pc card goes in here and here anyway mm-hmm and that was the other thing, too. If you have the, the PC card, I don't know where I have it, but I have it somewhere. There was an Apple II card that would fit into this, and that is not compatible with this machine either. But once again, it, it's another interesting thing, because these were too slow to emulate hardware. So it was, an, there was, a, it was a much smaller card. Than the, the PC card for this is like this whole big thing. But the Apple II card is only this big. And yeah, so it was an Apple II on a chip, basically. And once again, though, it used the Macintosh side to emulate your inputs and outputs. But that worked a little better than this does. You know, I'm surprised they never did a 2GS one. 
you know, interesting <laughs> fact about the 2GS. The 2GS used the same chip as the Apple II board for the LC. Really? To emulate the 8-bit side. That's neat. I didn't know that. Yeah. Six minutes. Still going. So tell me, Mr. Annoy, is this what it was like dealing with Windows 95 when it was new? You know, I want to rip on it, but no, it wasn't this bad. But I will tell you what was terrible. And the reason why I waited forever for the file to transfer to copy it off of here, <clears throat> these machines were not really advertised as Windows compatible. They are DOS compatible. So getting win- oh. Ew. Hold on. <clears throat> We've got an hourglass. But getting Windows 95 to work on these was not fun. It required a lot of weird drivers and finagling. Now the software was available online before. I don't know if it is now, but that was, it was it was a chore. <clears throat> now I just gotta show you how to put Windows ninety eight on it. Oh gosh, let's not do that to it. It's already slow. Still thinking. You can see here we still have activity. Got the small hourglass, we're getting closer. You know, I remember you mentioned before, like, the official Windows 95 specifications was, like, a 386, 16, or? 12. 12. I wonder how that compares to this. I wish I had one to try it. Loading little bits of the sound file at a time. <laughs> We're getting closer. All right, our glass went away. Still, though it still says busy over there. It does. Can't wait to play some games. And they're gonna work super well. Oh man. You won't be able to lose because it'll load so slowly. <laughs> you can't lose if you can't play. That's true. The only winning move is not to play. Which I don't know if we're going to be able to. Is it going to actually make it? Ten minutes officially. Oh. Oh. We got a menu bar. Or, oh no, what do they call it? Task bar. Task bar. And look, the internet. The internet. Just to remind you of the wonderful time that it was back when this was new. It's not Internet Explorer or what is it now? Edge. It's just the internet. I think no we're still it's still doing something can we click on anything yet oh my gosh all right so it takes 11 minutes to start windows 95 over a serial cable 
between two old Macintoshes. 11 minutes. <laughs> and mind you, this is not emulation. This is actually loading on a real 486DX2. Yes. <laughs> None of that virtual PC crap. Nope. This couldn't this couldn't support virtual PC if it wanted to. There's no way. So it's a real 486 soldered onto a card that's plugged into the computer. Eleven minutes. And look, it's actually done. See? Now it's all back to idle. It's back to idle. There we go. Well, there you go. Treat special. <laughs> Wow. All right, folks. Well, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs. Up. Oh wait. Well, hold on. There are games. There are games. So we don't want to end just yet. All right. People that watch LGR know about Epic Pinball. <laughs> Back to busy. It's thinking. This yeah. might take another time. That knocking, that knocking, the hard drive is getting angry, isn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Can it do it? Oh. It's blinking. should be a lot less resource intensive than Windows 95 is. It's a DOS game. I just want to hear the audio. Playing kind of smooth. But there's no picture. Oh. Don't Beware. copy that floppy. I can't believe this is loading. It's not even accessing the disk right now. Now it is. Okay, so you know what? I bet you under DOS, using the serial cable is probably totally plausible as like actually working. Kind of, kind of. You may have spoken too soon, my friend. Oh, it's loading. It's loading. Come on, ballistic machine. You can do it. Send that data. Now, I'm really surprised the audio wasn't like when the, the computer started, it was all like choppy. It probably, because it, it's not a, it's all. It's MIDI based. Okay. It's not a WAV file. All right, is this playable? I'm no good at this, so. I can't believe it. It's like totally playable. But the physics are a little off though if you look at it. It is messing with it. The physics are off. If you look the way the ball's moving, it's kind of like jumping around. That's funny. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> I'm surprised it runs as well as it does. I know, me too. <laughs> That's hilarious. As long as it took Windows to load. 
Yeah. But we were right though. The games are acting weird because I don't, it's hard to tell, but the way the ball is moving, instead of being smooth, it was like, it didn't know how to react. Unreal. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.